uh, everyone likes to have a good look and a good hooker. That was not a pun. And <laughs> <laughs> that was definitely a pun. <laughs> anyway, moving into the game, we're in the Champions section screen for the Bangkok Titans against the Malay Eagles. It is the second game of tonight. And this is going to be a very interesting match to prepare for you guys. So both teams are in. But the first band though is actually going to be kill. So MLE has been famous for protect the king composition where they pick Kormor and Kormor just attacks from behind and the heavy CCs to guard him. So kill is he being banned out and the respawn coming out from MLE is going to be Shen, which is just a global presence. And then we see Blitzcrank being banned out. No surprises there as we have talked about it earlier. Now the only question is what MLE is going to do and, and is if BKT is going to pick Trash as their first pick. So we see Dina being banned out um, as the. If I remember correctly, the Forza MLE, hmm? and Biscuit kind and of Ball banned out, and the other team picked up Trash. They tried Nami. Nami? Yes, but it didn't work out so well. And Nami is hard to land um, skill shots and it's hard to keep, keep them in the it's, place you want. It requires very yes. good timing. Too. It's very quite good timing. You have studied the psychology yes. of opponents. You know you're going to do that and you'll be able to land a core prison. It's not an easy champion to play at all. True. And so yes. the bands, the last few bands is going to be Elise and for the South Emily is going to be Rise. So trash, first pick, do it. It should Bang. be trash. It's normally you would ban Elise there we unless go. you pick it up. So you don't want your opponent to stick it, so it's to ban it off and it's going to be trash. Yeah, there we go. The first pick going uh, out on the side of Bangkok Titans is trash. E as starting, what is he gonna play now as a support? Um, he could be Nami once again, but his the record so far for his Nami against Trash well, was only one game, so I can say it was not so good. So, zero percent. So, zero percent. You know, if I try to exaggerate numbers, that yeah. would be it. <laughs> the, the fact remains, it's zero percent. This is how people play with statistics. Yeah, I only Just believe like, in statistics that I produce myself. Yeah, I cannot believe it. Like, someone tells me, Oh, I win 100 percent against how many games do you play? One. Yes. Hey, 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 I have, a, I have a few hundred percent wins in rank because they're all one game. <laughs> anyway, so moving on for the side of MLE, we will see Kha'Zix being picked up. So we might be going for more assassin combinations right now instead of Protect the King since Kill has been taken off. And what do you think? What do you think is going to be going on in both players' minds now? MLE is taking a long time to select the picks, but it's going to be Alistar once again. Hmm. Do you think it worked so well the other time? Alistar could jungle as well as being a support. So maybe we might see an Alistar jungle. We haven't seen a lot of uh, Alistar's jungle these days because he kind of falls behind if he fails a gank. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he, his level 2 gank is scary. Very, yes. very scary. But what makes him uh, kind of, not to, I don't want to say unviable, but less viable in the jungle is that he falls behind if he does not secure enough ganks. Yes, he needs to help his team snowball early. He either gets like two kills or gets like four or six assists by five minutes and then he'll be <laughs> well set off. He does not farm the jungle monsters that much because he just takes too long to kill them off. So he's rather... He needs to charge out to go for a gang. Yes, it's going to be Nautilus. Yes, Nautilus. Please lock in that Nautilus for me. Oh, is that a sudden obsession with Nautilus? Did I do Just that you, haven't, you haven't been following me enough. You know, I've told okay. you, you should know that my favorite junglers are Maokai and Nautilus, but they personally play quite mm -hmm. a bit. And because of the recent buff of Nautilus, even in LCS, we see Nautilus being picked up quite a bit. Well, he does not win all the games for his teams, but you can see how well he's played the overall CC, the potential it brings for the team. And the utility. And the utility. In Season 2, Nautilus was one of the hot picks because of how great he was, but they nerfed him slightly because he was doing too good. But in Season 3, those nerfs made him too weak to be played. So Riot changed back a few things of boosting his armor and releasing the cooldowns on his Titan's Wrath, which is the most important skill for him in the jungle. And he's so much playable now. I'm sorry to talk so much about Nautilus. And moving on, we will okay. see... I get excited with Terry as well. It's it is because you're gay. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that sometimes, um, now just, we can see that Tarek is no longer picked up these days. Like I've seen He's yeah, not less so Tarek. He's active anymore. He's still a strong champion. But you could see when it comes to team fights, he falls off. If you don't snowball your lane, lanes hard enough, he does provide a lot of damage. So you see, when he beats pace to support the jungle, he provides his aura of armor, of AP, of AD. But if his team is not doing well, that does not matter. Through that, yes. and we can see that uh, Jarwin being picked up. So I believe it, it may still be Alistair jungle, and then Jarwin goes mid or, or, or top. But you would see Alistair mid. Like Charlie, please. Yeah, um, could go back and then. Yes. And oh, like Scarra, Scarra does play, 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 did play Alistair mid for his, on his live streams as well. 
Well, if that's live streams because that's not a competition. Oh, so. you never know. It might just suddenly pop up. Like how Chari brings Karma and caught more mid and then owns the crap out of Kha'Zix. I mean, we support <laughs> more on the crap out of Kha'Zix, but not as Karma, but as Karma still does play fantastically in mid. See. But here, for the lockdown for the last two champions outside of BKT, it's going to be Kha'Zadin as well as Tristana. And interesting pick though, Tristana and Trash work so well. They have quite great burst and synergy. Once the death center lands, the rocket jump goes in for the additional burst and slow and the explosive shots. It just helps them secure the kill so easily. So hopefully Shistana will not go for build the Rune King though. Because it might not work out so well against Kha'Zix as well as Javan. When they dive right into your face, the sustain and auto attack, even though it's there, might not be might not be enough to heal you or bring down them bring your opponents fast enough. Yes, the important thing here will be uh, the dark passage coming out from Oh the lantern, sorry. The lantern coming out from Correct, trash. it's called Dark Passage. Why are you correcting yourself? Dark passage, dark passage, it's right? Dark passage, yes. Okay, my bad. So, so yes, be more confident about yourself. You know, even though you are, you are, you know, you know. Yes. Yeah, so the most important thing will be the dark passage, uh, where Tristana goes in. If she ever chooses to, she has the option to go go right back out. And also, when Jarvan dives her, or even if uh, Kazix dives her, she will. The lantern will be the number Still, one yeah. thing that saves her life. So, when it comes to trash and the AD carry, when it comes to going for the kills. They need to separate off themselves very well when they run away or dive in so that they will not get caught together in the dark passage will be able to save any one of them in a good situation and which is actually going for clarity I mean it's going to be changed later so it's going to be clarity and heal Hopefully she remembers to change it going down for a 15 second cooldown Well, well um, oh, the could... servers has been lagging lately so I'm not too sure she'll be able to change in time She should be able to change it no, I wanted to not change it so I can laugh So it's going to be an AP Tristana yeah, it, nah, she's gonna be nothing Tristana because she can she once she can only choose to okay, go. There's a flash in the end. <laughs> Dang damn it. Yes, you lost. Yep. Anyway, lost. so moving back to this game. So we're gonna go to a short commercial break before we bring the runes and runes and masteries for this upcoming match. So do stay tuned. Okay, so here we are right back. We're going to go through Nautilus Ruins and Masters again. Of course, we did see Little Boss play him yesterday. And this is going to be a similar rune set. With the changes though being at the Glyphs, where he picks up the 4 Magic Resist. And then the Magic Resist per level. Instead of going for full Magic Resist per level, at level 18. So it's going to be a standard beginning for the support junglers. Or have to say, our utility junglers. Where they're using the additional attack speed to land the auto attacks faster with their skills to clear the minion much quicker. But on the side of the mastery tree, for little boss, he played a 5 0 15 15, 15 points on defense, 15 points on utility, so he'll be able to be more mobile as well as the gold generation, so he can focus on ganking instead of farming. But on the side of NDD, he's going to go for more safe build but often you get more, the more tanky options We're actually going to pick up the Juggernaut for the additional health which helps a bit with the Titan's Wrath and then taking the Honor Guard and then going back to the Utility Tree where he will take the points up to Runic Infinity, Mastermind not taking Wanderer but instead taking Meditation so that he'll be able one thing about support junglers is that once you don't give them the blue buff, they will have co problems, con a lot of problems trying to control their mana consumption. If they use it to clear up the jungle waves too much, they're going to come out of the ganks with not enough mana. That is true. Yeah, I, so I have experienced it many times. That's why I do not. The number one thing that I dislike in rank is jungling. So I always uh, choose not to jungle. But in this case, 
if I ever have to, I will not pick one that needs mana. I mean, that is ridiculously addicted to mana, such as uh, Nautilus, Shaco, Amumu. Those, those champions require uh, mana not only to gank, but also to clear their jungles. So you're not, so you're going to play Lee Sin and miss skill shots instead? Uh, miss skill shots, debatable. <laughs> <laughs> debatable. <laughs> yeah, debatable. Yeah, but I do miss quite a lot with uh, Lee Sin. It's okay, so I play Tarek as your support. You That's why I don't jungle. That's you why just I don't. do this and the stun flies out. Right? Yep. And I cannot miss. There's no skill involved. Okay, I mean, unless you miss. Unless, like, you like. You hit onto the minion. Yeah, you hit onto the minion, then I'm. I've done it, to I say, done it a few times myself accidentally. I was like, okay. <sighs> the horror. It's like, when you do the mistake really? as a support, you might need to breathe. You're like, oh, damn it. I'm going to Sorry, AD. Uh, the, um, I had a phone call. Yeah, this is another one reason. I, was like, I had a phone call. It's a very important phone call. It's a job offer. <laughs> it's a job offer, really. He's going to say, yeah. so, why are you playing League of Legends instead? He's gonna complain about those things. Because League, League of Legends is my life. Dum, dum, dum. Why are you so bad at it? <laughs> <laughs> I fail. I fail at life. Okay. <laughs> this right. is the, the game of life in which mm. you're trying to fail. Okay. So moving back into this game's more important things, we'll see that the lineup for BKT is slightly like a protect the king, just in a sniffing way where we will have Nautilus as with his death charge and equalizer coming out from. Rumble to slow down the entire opponent team. Well, Castle needs three being able to go in, jump in, as well as Tristana just auto attacking safely from the side, only using the rocket jump when needed. Yep. And in contrast to that, MLE seems to have the kill the king composition. And we can see Kazix, Jarvan, uh, Ari all able to just get in there, pick up the targets. And even Alistar, who will be able to hang back to protect Israel, all conversely able to initiate as well. We can see the, the game has now started. Uh, they're deciding the venue to the first um, clubbing session they're going to go to. We can s we'll see where they decide to go for. Such a bad references. Are you trying to teach kids to do things at a young age? You can club at home. It's <laughs> <Club. laughs> just all you need is music. Okay. Yeah, break, break out your board games, you know, play Monopoly. It's quite mm -hmm. fun. No, you don't play Monopoly anymore. You play Life or you play... Mm -hmm. No, there's tons of board games right now. It used to be only Monopoly, Risk, and... Uh... There's actually a board game that someone created for League of Legends. In really? NA, but it's like, they created it themselves. So it's, it's not official. Yeah, so it's not official, like an official board game. So here we see the pink one being planted out very quickly. You're going to take out that... War... ...from BKT. As they do have strike, it's quite a strong start with the champions they have. They're going for the counter jungle, they have the charm as well as the additional knockout from Power Rise if the charm does land and they could easily burst down an opponent champion. It used to be a rule of thumb that if the enemy has an Alistar, do not counter, I mean do not invade their jungle. Well, if I have a Beast Kang, I will still invade your jungle. Yeah, because <laughs> Beast Kang is just <laughs> such a hooker. You can just hook people in, isolate them, immediately murder them, it's 4 versus 5, no way you can continue fighting from there. And so the, the jungles is just going to normalize right now. Speed at all, but it's okay, I'll give you that. Okay, I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he's going to be a standard star for both teams in terms of where the AD carries and support for the blue team will be taking the golems. But Nautilus is actually going to start at the raves and then moving on to the raid buff. So, it's we might see an early gang up mid or even to the top because Nautilus gained, started with this route. He will have a harder time though, he needs to manage his mana much bet better and he's going to take a lot more damage from the raid lizard than usual because in the early game Nautilus does not have that much damage to take down jungle camps. He needs to reach level three and his Titan Wrath at level two. Yeah, and and Trash even taking a creep off there, being quite naughty, but small issue. It's just five gold. And it's just small. If you take the red, then it would be. It would be a very large issue. Yeah, and it would be uh, unusable. And here we, at the same time, we see bottom a trade going on. I believe which at a combination. range and trash to save him. He needs to be very careful of his next positioning and look at that. I started starting out with so many ping ones just denying overall vision away from the bottom lane. Yeah, interesting to thing to note, it seems to be like a top middle swap where yes. Rumble normally goes to the top lane but in this case Cassidy uh, has been placed at the top lane. What do you think about that? I suppose when both Kha'Zix and Cassidy reach to level 6, he will be able to silence Kha'Zix as he leaps and jump away with walk. 
and place itself in a safer position. And every time Kha'Zix spams a spell, you can see, as I was mentioning, look at that, the silence goes up, and there's no great fallout coming out from Hate, and he's just waiting for his chance to go in. But at the top lane, Hate may be able to take a kill here. Ignite does come off. First blood goes on the side of MLE. Just a one-to-one -one fight as Cassidy was one level lower. And yes. Hate just capitalized on that, placed the Ignite, and there was no way Cassidy could run away without hitting level 6 yet. Mm -hmm. And Verhan was just wanting to save his summoner spells, not even flash away, even though there's something that could save. If you look at that, the, the payback coming from Alista, but does did not make sense. He did not really combo into it. I he think missed he the might, combo. I think, yeah, he might have. He missed the combo. Shot it a bit too early. As yeah. in, he has he slammed the ground before going in, so. Yeah, a bit, a bit of a mistake right there, but not too much of a problem because Tristana and Trash is now forced back into the lane. And that 8 seconds is actually almost the same, but at, as I say that, mid lane gets a gank. Uh, Jarwin... Um, I believe Rumble was waiting for the perfect time. I'm so dead. Yes. I guess he's just wriggling around, saying I'm just dead. I I'm not sure why he was wriggling around, he didn't try to pull himself back further into the minion wave. Or to the tower, hopefully gaining some damage onto the opponent jungle or ATM. I was like, there's no way for me to go, I'm just gonna wiggle, 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 wiggle. Make, and my, make my death a statement. I'm not sure about that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, I still can't place. I'm trying to think of the possible scenarios of why you would want to wiggle. Uh, so maybe your jungle was near, but Nautilus was nowhere near enough to be at that position. Mm -hmm. Here, Rohan is very careful. Look at the knockout come from PF and the flash being used by Rohan, but a 4 hour flash from PF should be enough to help him secure this kill. He does have the very buff on Rohan. Whoosh! Simply being able to make it up with the Ignite. He might secure this kill. Yes, he does. He takes the free red buff. It might be a double kill because he goes in for it. Yes, he gets a double kill. And there's just. MLE going all in for that pickup, I'm not sure whether it was worth it. It wasn't worth it at all. Not only does, you, um, does MLE lose the presence of the jungle, because knowing that the jungle is no longer um, alive out th and out there in the jungle, it's so much easier to just lane. And not only that, Cassidy gets two kills, brings him closer to level 6 where he actually becomes much, much more uh, of a threat. And, well, 2 for 1, the numbers itself speaks. <laughs> Unless it was like a 4 or 5 hundred go shut down and give yeah. you to levels, it would definitely be so much more worth it and better to pick up. So um, the problem with having any star though, his presence when he walks forward is scary, but when he has no minions to go through or to follow up with, he's extending behind, waiting for a perfect opportunity, and skills in which will still be able to free farm without that much pressure. Once again, another vision ward. He is really stacking up on the pinks today, as he has at least bought 3 this game, denying... Um, BKT vision wherever and whenever he can, especially at the bot lane. He comes in with the combo. Israel just goes in for a little bit of a poke. I guess that was a little bit just to scare off Tristana, but Tristana did not take much damage from that thanks to the shield coming out from Dark Passage. And but Trist the problem now lies within why they picked Ezreal with Alista. Ezreal does not have that great of a Burst damage, and he will not be able to fall that much. Oh, skills will miss his fail. Will not be able to bring Astarte. Astarte, not sure what he was doing, will miss Nautilus. Nautilus with his hook up, and really will be able to lock hit Astarte down. But they're going for a very tanky support. It will not be the best choice. And here, we will see NDD just walking for the lock ins for all the champions. Just switching targets on and about. Astarte will go down to give the kill on for which which still has his jump. He will shoot. Wow. Be able to jump out. I'm not sure why he not jump wow. out. He makes NDD die as well. It's going to be a 2 for nothing, but no, NDD will click on the lantern. Should be able to get out. Yes, he uses the dash line onto the tower. Perfect escape. Yes, with so much. Uh, it was a perfect escape, but Tristana kind of makes me doubt the perfect part of it. Because she could should have the refresh yes. uh, onto Rocket Jump. Uh, so I feel that might be a little bit of a misclick or, or a mistake there. What do you think? It's not the mana problem, I believe her mana. It was a mana problem. She had more than fifty percent mana, so I believe it was like a. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I, I just felt that. Oh, way. at the top lane, we see Cassidy and uh, Kazix having a little bit of a duel. Who will come out ahead? Hit backs off. The he remembers what happened when the last time he dived at Cassidy didn't turn out too well. Decides to back off, and also his skills was a little bit too far from being on cooldown. Yes. Uh, off cooldown, I mean. So we'll see that. A great comeback from Rohan, but he needs to be very careful. He does not. He must make sure he does not get hit by the void spikes, and still be able to harass hate away. 
Yeah. Um, Alistar at the bottom lane, I have not hardly seen Alistars these days. There might be a reason to, to why that is. Well, uh, Alistar is a great peel off your AD carry or initiate as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that his skills cooldowns too long. And if he misses his combo, it becomes a hit or miss. If he, how you work the hate button and power rise. He still be able to place plays like Lee Sin in terms of you flash behind the AD carry. You use your power rise first and then knock them back into your team. It's still very much possible, but with the recent nerf on Flash, where it's just 400 range, you really need to be able to walk straight into your opponent's face and decide. Here we see the hotel, so let's go to BYY, BYY will take a chunk of damage, but here and started with the headbutt and power rise will stop some of the damage being dished onto him and he will be making out alive. Oh, skills putting, um, giving Astarte a little bit of a taste of his own medicine, putting on a pink ward to remove Astarte's pink ward, um, giving the vision back on the side of BKT. Uh, just now, when we see the death sentence land onto Ezreal, I thought Ezreal would take a little bit more damage from that. But it seems Ezreal seems to be a good counter to Trash because of his escape. He's been able to escape very quickly into a safer position. But the problem still lies in the items he's buying. He's going for the Spear of the Lizard Elder. He will have the extra regeneration. But will it be enough for him to win against this team? He's going to be a utility AD once again. It's going to help Kha'Zix secure kills instead. Here we'll see Nautilus coming from the back, just dancing around. The hook goes in, that's the fail happens, and look at the Dark Passage. He and Didi will not click onto it because Trash is, was pushed back a bit too far, and he's going to be forced to fall back. And here which with his ultimate will push PF away, but the Dredge line as well as the damage come on the Thunderbolt will force him to fall back. Yeah, this is the second time where both jungles meet at almost the same time, same place, which is at bot lane. And the trade comes into the favor of MLE. As we can see, Trash was a little bit off position, and Alistar knocked him into the raid tower, the range of their tower, and Jorwin with the ultimate locked Trash down. But we can see well, Nautilus just sticking around, going right away for uh, Ezreal. Ezreal gets knocked out by the ultimate. But nice knock up there by the Alistar. Yes. That saved Ezreal so much damage. One thing bad about Tristan's rocket jump is that if you're still jumping midway, you will still take CCs and a chunk of things. It will stop you from flying. Yes, although the animation is a fly, it's actually a dash. Yes. In, in reality, the system calculates it as a dash. And if, even if you were trying to get away from a volley bear, they'll still be able to pull you back from right up in the sky. Yes, he flings you yeah, back flings behind you back. him. Like, doesn't make sense, but yeah. Doesn't okay, have because to. he's just being a boss. And here we'll see a chalk and he's gonna to try to go on to the kill on Raihan. As well as Javan coming up, PF coming up from the side, but here we see Raihan be able to make the great escape with his Rift Walk, but they will take this tower down. Yes, Cassadin becomes very, very slippery as uh, as soon as he reaches level 6, and once he has the mana to sustain that slipperiness. Okay, Oxford Dictionary as well. Check it out. And <laughs> He becomes very hard to gank on, unless you can um, combo silence or stuns onto him. Yes, or oh, you maybe lock him. Must lock him down very hard, especially after reach level six. It's going to be very hard to secure the gank onto Kasadin. And here we will see the bottom lane with the post coming for Ezio. He has completed the spirit of the lizard elder, and because of the additional two kills and the tower, and maybe he's slightly in the lead in this game for two k but the overall goal defense of the champions is not that great. We do see 85 CS on Tristana, but a 3.5k gold. As you because of the two additional kill and the tower money is at 3.7k. Yeah, that so, would give Ezreal a slight edge. Not too much that they cannot um, offset it by just good positioning. So we'll, this is still anybody's game, I'll say. And Dragon will be a major contested point soon enough. Um, and we'll see what goes on from there. I see the pink wards coming out from Estate all day, every day. You see a pink ward being placed down. Skills must be come on, gang. We just shake hands. We're not gonna plant pink wards ever. Screw our ADs. We're just gonna be a support to support agreement that we nah. will not have a ward war. When it comes to ward war, it really depends who can gain the most advantage. And currently, the advantage is slightly in favor of MLE because of the two assists that. Oh, Asate has as well as the Philosopher's Stone. I smell a Bing Engage coming on as in the jungle. We see Ari and Jarwin as well as Nautilus and Rumble moving around. They see Jarwin, they spotted him out. Pink's going out to show that Jarwin is there. This is probably going to lead into a very um, Cold War kind of stance where everyone's just saying, okay, I'm here, what are you going to do about it? I'm not going to commit, are you? And no one says anything at all. 
So it's S. Just take it safe. Please, yeah, just though. play it safe. And yep, things back into normal. Ari just grabbing the brew, but as I say that, the bottom lane does have a little bit of a skirmish, which just staying in front and grabbing onto Dark Passage at the very last moment. But the pokes coming up from Ezreal is beginning to show its effect, especially with the spirit uh, oh, of the Elder. Elder. Is it Elder? The, dam the DPS, even after the poke has landed, is still just ticking onto him. And now the, the dragon will be taken by MLE. Uh, BKT came in just in time to see him die. Equalizer comes down. Uh, Alistar immediately props his ultimate. Uh, Ari, spirit rushing all the way, trying to get into Witch, Witch rocket jumping, he's trying to get the kill to end the reset, she does get it, rocket jumps back out, it's gonna be a 1 for 1 trade, a 2 for 1 trade as Trash has fall fallen as well, and now Alista falls, but, the, the, oh man, that was hard to call as I believe, they nearly shot each other to death, but Ari got the kill in the end. This is such a skirmishy fight, as all members are actually involved in this fight somehow, but in the end, MLE just come out with slightly ahead, slightly with ahead. Additional yeah. oh, and an additional kill, and, and the dragon. Yes. Must not forget about and that the dragon. as well. It's, it's, uh, sorry, <coughs> I got it wrong. It's actually spirit of the lizard, elder, and elder lizard. I've been saying it wrong for the whole time. I'm not <laughs> sure what's happening to my brain today. Most probably, you're, are you trying to scam my brain? Already did. You just didn't notice it yet. Okay, so here back <laughs> into this game, we will see. MLE secure the second tower. Here, the Nautilus is running really quickly because of the mobility boots. But he didn't use his dredge line. I'm not sure why. I wish he should just toss it out and pull Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix will most likely leap away. It's just going to be a waste of both skills. Well, looking at the level difference. And the tower is going to die as well. So he feels. At that point of time. That could, that, could, that could just be it. Now, hit as Kazi's at level 11, it's just going to be so scary. His upgrade will be able to get into great positions as well as grand easy kills around the top team fights. And so far, in terms of team fights, you could see once, uh, even though it was a 3 on 3 first, when it came down to 2 on 2, Kazi just had so much more burst damage. I was able to lock down Rumble and kill him so easily. Yeah, something interesting at the bot lane as well. Um, Death Sentence landed onto uh, Alistar, but he did literally did not flinch from that at all. Um, the damage coming from him uh, landed onto him is instantly healed up with uh, his vict triumphant raw. Yes. So it's it feels that right now Alistar is kind of bullying the lane with with both Death Sentences and skill shots landed landed on onto him. He does not feel it as much. But the problem is that the focus that's happening. Mainly came from the jungle though. The jungle Javan has been ganking much more efficiently than NDD on Nautilus so far. Like Nautilus has one death and three assists, but look at oh. Java with two deaths and seven assists. And here we will see a four-man gang down I mean two-man gang down Bob, but everyone on the south. Ray Kitty has came in as well. The box will stop Astarte and PF the Okay, Jump will stop PF even more. PF uses his cataclysm but will catch start Astarte inside because NDD hooking right into it. The Rocket Jump happens again. BBY is slow and he uses uh, Shushu Arcane Bubash will take down Shistana and tries to juke the enemy team. But they will secure, Rumble will secure hit the kill onto him and it's going to be a 3 for 1 trade. And a counter gank, a counter initiate coming out from MLB KT as they just knew where MLU was moving in. Yeah, so spotted them out. Excellent counter gang going off on BKT, instantly reacting to the fact that Ari and Jarwin was heading towards the bottom lane and just capitalizing on the on the fact that MLE does not expect a four man counter gang. And if we are gonna go back shortly into a replay to slowly contemplate on how they have fallen. But at before that, mid lane seems to be in a little bit of a pressure. Uh, we can see he the just took advantage when the teams were down fighting and down board. They, he went off to clear down the mid. So moving into replay right now, just to quickly see how well it turned out. As I missed out, oops, sorry, I missed out a, a few points as the fight went on. You can see here, Chalk and PF coming in from the side as well. But everyone else from the side of BKT is actually at the back though. They're actually coming from the side. So they're just nearby the vicinity, but they just knew something was happening and they came off to help Astarte. And we, I mean, which and skills as the dive was going on. So here we will see the fight happening. Astarte being a boss, going very close. Chop will come in. So here we will, PF will meet NDD and Kazakhstan on the side. And look at that. Power rise misses because which goes, flashes away. But the knockout coming off for Java will lock him down. But the box just slowing everyone down. Unable to get out. And the death charge hitting onto RB. He was 
Queen able to lock him down and later on the Cataclysm came out did not help his team at all so far and then that was just what happened and just snowballed slightly from there and that's what gave them quite a great advantage over MLE instead. It's not back into the game we will see BKT just being very sneaky in the mid lane trying to hide and catch some off and look at the instant science going the rocket jump equalizer and they just secure the kill so easy with the ultimate coming out from Tristana. Yeah, Israel attempted to escape, but unfortunately for him, he escaped right into the hands of Trash, and he gets taken out not by Trash, but by the DPS coming out from the um, the previous fight. BKT seems to be switching this around, where we see MLE actually owning in the early game. BKT is actually now taking the fights, making the plays, um, taking the advantage, actually. Yes. Uh, but there's MLE. a slight CS defense as well as the Dragon that happened earlier, so that's why we will see that MLE... 2.5k gold and BKC still needs to put in more effort meaning much more team fights in order for them to make a comeback in this game yeah when we look back uh, into the items and we will look into the AD carries first we see Ezreal uh, even though his CS is a little bit on the lower side we must remember he does have the dragon and the additional two kills and he's soon to have his frost um, ice, bound ice bound gauntlets and his gauntlets will make him very very annoying with every attack slowing down um, in a mini AoE. Not very every attack, but every mystic shot. Yeah, every mystic shot and almost every attack because Ezreal's so, skills are so spammable and he most probably will try to queue it up um, to put the effect of Frost in almost every second he possibly can. Yes. And here we will see though the game has moved into the mid game but three, two towers taken down on both ends and it comes to War of Attrition where the next dragon will most probably be how they would like to fight but they need to be very careful not to be caught off guard. BKT is actually seen though by this ward that has been planted from the side of <laughs> MLE. They know about it, they are getting on around it. Look at their five members in the same location. <laughs> it's not going to be so great if Jarvan yeah. manages to dive right in. Yeah, so here yeah. we see the ward, sees Jarvan. Jarvan is walking around but he goes into a blind spot to knock up everyone. The Cataclysm comes out to knock up. All the ultimates come up and it becomes an instant win for the side of MLE. It was just all the ultimates coming together, perfectly played, and they knew there was a blind spot of the ward in that area, yeah. and that was what just helped PKT so quickly. Lia instantly flashed away, threw his ultimate, but there was nothing that could have been done. Yeah, I can totally relate on how BKT is feeling right now. It's like, oh, oh my, oh my, we gotta get them, we gotta get them this time. And they were waiting there, not knowing that MLE has spotted them out, immediately capitalized on that where they're all chunked up in one small area that is perfect for all the champions Kha'Zix, Javan, um, Ari and even Alistar require, uh, does very well in the, the small AOE, AOE, the small skills going up. and you will see MLE moving on to the Baron very quickly chunking it down with their overall abilities and that will be the Dragon and Baron follow-up pickup by the side of MLE instantly pushing their goal lead to 7k yeah uh, BKT must be rubbing their foreheads now because they have slammed their heads so hard on the table um, that they had... Yes, one the thing they... about the wards in this area yeah. is that you plant this ping so you know there's no ping ward in the vicinity but the problem is this ward. Yeah, the this, ironic this ward. This is the most annoying ward ever because even at Baron, that's the place where you want... You have to plant two ping wards at times because you want to make sure there's no wards in the area. You plant the ping ward in this brush and then one in the one in the pit area so you know that you are safe and you can do the shenanigans you want but some of BKT they only really thought that the ward would be planted at the dragon in all the actions we see <laughs> and you could see how Jaron just went to the blind side of the wall ward and just went in Instant yeah and he was so cute as well we could see Tristana actually taking the effort to make a long round to not be spotted out by the people within the jungle to hide with his teammates and he's like alright guys I'm here then and instantly, yeah. Javan just goes in and yeah. in, in start kill of everything. Yeah, so. and Nautilus also checked out uh, Baron only to discover it is already gone. Mm -hmm. uh, but he did manage to pick up some of the wards, get their money back, and BKT knew that they lost that because they did not have enough vision of where the wards for the side of MLE were. And here you can see how aggressive they are. They do have the Baron buff and they are so much far ahead in gold. Ari and Kha'Zix, both assassins, are just charging in. And here we will see they're going to push go down for the bottling push. And right now, Kha'Zix built this is something that uh, Stanley built as well. Mm -hmm. 
in the previous game when he was going against the AP champion, he took up the Chairs of Harmony Brutalizer. But in the next trigger, here you see an instant cataclysm going in the true shot rush hits almost onto everyone. The knock up and power rise coming from the side and a clear cleanup from Kazix as well as RV. And look at the explosive shot. Well be able to push L away, but will not be enough to stop the damage from RV coming back right up. Yo, that was just annihilation on the side of MLE. They're gonna take the bottom tower as their reward. They still have the Baron buff, the regeneration, able to push them on. They're gonna take the bottom inhibitor for certain. And I don't think anything uh, there is anything Bangkok Titans can do to stop, at least for this uh, inhibitor. And this is putting MLE so much ahead. We can see the goals at 10k. The Baron is the instrumental thing here. As well as going back to the fight that enabled them to have that Baron. It's, I would say Bangkok Titans will be wadding everywhere after this. And even with the, the fact that both sides have been planting pink wards all around, they did not catch that one ward, that one ward that cost them. Um, the ace, the ace, as well as the dragon and barrel. So we're going to move back into the re the replay for that fight that happened at the tower. It's going to be very quick on how it's going to initiate first with Ramus ultimate where he wants to clear the minion waves, but MLE is like it do doesn't matter. Javan just charges into the Martian strand, the dragon strike, cataclysm locking three members down, and here we will see Abi charging in so easy hitting on Trish of Rush hits on the four members, and here Alista just walking through the side going for the hit but a knockout combo for Power Rise and MLE hit just dishing the hurt onto Lia, taking tower, it's no problem at all. Chalk just charges in in the end with the Spirit Rush and will secure the kill onto NDD in the end with the Spirit Fire and the auto attack I believe. And that was just a clear pick up for the side of MLE once again. Javan is just one of the strongest and best initiators in the game currently and if you don't ban him out, you really need to be able to respond to what he is doing yeah, and what he's able to do as well, if we can see his score, he has 15 assists more than the, the support. That's because he has been ganking lanes and success. That the bank, the uh, Vanilla Eagle, sorry, is trying to pressure middle. And with, 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 with the Baron buff gone, they're probably going to have to wait it out a little bit longer. But the advantage is definitely on their side. Still with the 10k goal lead, we'll see what MLD tries to do from here. They can wait it out definitely because... Um, they had the advantage, yeah. and we can see that Asante has picked up the Oracle, so he is going to be able to deward, clear off the vision before they decide to dive in. They know it's safe, and they are in a great spot before anyone from the south MLE will be able to pick them up. Yeah, the things is very tense here in the middle lane. As anything can happen within seconds, it's just how these teams will engage. Sure, the goal, the goal lead is in MLE. They'll be able to capitalize on that. But still, if they move in into the concave of uh, BKT or if they mess up, uh, anything could go wrong, especially when you are diving that third tower. Yes, and so here we will see they're going to transition to the top second tier tower, but look at the pokes of White Spark as well as the Azure Mystic Shot doing so much damage onto the opponent team. And they're just going to give up that tower and just going to opt to defend the other lanes and defend in the base after this. Yeah, and look at the ward coverage on the side of MLE. There, they have a lot of um, battlefield awareness on where the enemies are. Uh, by that ward planted right at the side and also the ones that are in the middle a moment ago. And Alistar is just being so tanky for his team. He's been doing a great job with the combinations that are coming up this time with, for the side of the MLE. But look at that, he's going to be able to lock his jumps in too far away. He's going to be brought down very quickly. That wasn't the best initiation this time. And here we will see Asante will be flashing all out of the base. And this is going to be a one for nothing trade in the favor. But nope, Chalk says no, I will not let my death of the jungle be in vain. But he will be able to secure only one kill. But he does delay though long enough for the minions to take down the turrets. I mean the Nexus turret at the bottom. Yes, and it ended up as a two-for-one trade. Something MLE can take, but as I said, this is something dangerous to do if you want to dive. You got to dive it properly. And Jarwin dived in, but no one else followed up, causing Jarwin to fall without doing much at all, burning his ultimate. Ari comes in just to secure our kill, just to make sure. That, yeah, there, there, Jarwin. See, we got a kill after all. <laughs> I've seen that Jarwin was just like, "Let's go, all in, yeah. all in." <laughs> the Martian standard, follow the yeah. flag. Oh, go, 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 go. Yeah, I can it's totally okay. imagine how that is happening it's right now. It's all for the minions. The minions charge right in, destroy the, he, the Nexus turret for the team. And he was like, Jarvan's like, yes, minions, you are the best. My team is just like, oh. yeah. Free Look at the free kill BKTP is picking up. <laughs> the, the Leroy Jenkins failed, but, well, 
now. We just oh, see wow. how it goes from here. So here we will you see another dragon going to go into Elmo's pocket. They're gonna pick up the gold, push the advantage further right now in 27 minutes, moving to the 28 minute mark with astonishing 12 well, 11, almost 12k gold difference, and they know the Baron timer, they're just gonna move right onto it. It's gonna be up in the next few seconds, and there the Baron is up and ready. Yeah, then they're gonna deward this very, very well now. Uh, Alistar found that ward, thankfully. He didn't just walk past it. It's gonna be a reverse um, ward kill, I would say. It's what, kill death by ward. Mm -hmm. yeah. So here, MMA can decide to initiate onto Baron or the. Or just bait the fight close to the Baron area. I feel they would um, they would bait the fight close to the Baron area, um, given that it's very dangerous to to Baron, especially when all five members is up. They do not have that solid, super solid lead that makes them undefeatable at this point. Well, uh, they do have that in terms of minions. <laughs> they have the two super minions pushing down board. They're just wishing, wasting a lot of time so that the minions will move on to the bottom area instead. And then they're just going to bait it out. So they're going to force Big AT to initiate, to charge in onto the Baron or to charge into the mid. Or they're going to fall back to defend and still MLE will be able to take the Baron in any, in any other way in their favor. Yeah, we also must enough. remember that the Nexus turret is uh, missing his partner. One, yes, one yeah. partner. It will not be enough. And... B MLE says that they're wasted. Oh, sorry, BKT knows that they're wasted too much time. There's no hope. They're gonna have to give up the Baron to defend the base. Yeah, so MLE getting a free Baron. We can see Alistar tanking it up. He's actually very tanky for a support, and that is a natural thing. Alistar does skill, um, does get a lot of HP per level as compared to many other supports out there. And now with the Baron, they will push down the lane. We'll see whether they will go back to capitalize on getting more items before pushing, but it wouldn't look like it right now. Um, Ari just going to get hit blue and after that we'll see most likely a push either into the bottom lane or in straight down the heart at the mid lane. Well, they're going to fall back to pick up some items. They have a lot of money in the, well, in their pouch. I would have to yeah, say. They have a lot of gold si sitting around on them. And it's oh, and it's just gold sitting around, you don't get interest on this, people. You only get interest when you buy it. This is, uh, this is so wrong. This economics is messed up. But yeah, in this case, it's better <laughs> to buy up your items because you get more value for it rather than saving it up well it depends on what you want to buy but i would say that you're partially correct so here we will see that bkt still trying to hold himself in the game all their inhibitors are still healthy because oh, of what one ari Drop. does not know what is behind her right now cassidy comes in and this is going to be lights out for ari a waste of the baron buff of one of their members i do not know why Ari needed to be there, but they probably have a plan to split push at bottom, pressuring PKT to come back while they push down middle. So it's a little bit of a slipped up, but nothing too heavy that will cost MLE the game, as they just need to wait for Ari now, 30 seconds before the respawn. Let's try to come in to steal um, the red buff away from Tristana. That kind of felt with double wards right there, great mind sink alike. <laughs> now they'll see have peripheral vision. I have made fun of this joke too many times, I think. <laughs> Yes, it's a very old joke. Yeah. But Honest. it is true, I mean, when you have two wards, you're supposed to have seen see it clearer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's okay, we had a discussion in the studio about the warding and how you can see everything with just one ward, so you don't need that many wards. It's okay, I'll teach you one day. Please do. Or you can ask Sulu to teach you. As long as you can help me get from Platinum 5 to Platinum 4. Okay, now I'll teach you, I'll never teach you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we will see though, and you will know, Still ahead with 12k gold, and they're just dancing around waiting for Ari to revive. As PP Commander had mentioned, nothing much is happening on the map. They're just waiting, which is not so great for MLV because the Baron buff is slowly withering down. And it's going to finish up waits. soon, but they're right now focusing on the bottom lane. Ari is coming from the side, and this will be a great chance for MLE to so most probably secure the inhibitor and secure the game if everything goes well. Look at that PF engages alone, and the death sentence just missed. There was something they great for the side of MLE because it was a 3 4 but they still had two members nearby while Ari was still travelling very very slowly. Yes, but they, they, have no, they have no bearing on where Ari is now. They, they do not know where Ari is. They just assume that it is not safe to engage and rightly so. This inhibitor is naked and MLE will be able to pound on it for, for any time as they wish. As long as BKT does not have the power and they do not have the necessary power to engage on right now. MLE can slowly poke onto that inhibitor down and gain super minions at the bottom lane. So here we will see PF being very tanky with the Bovark as well as the Lock and Slurry. Asadi gets hooked and he's like, 
Yeah, yeah please hold me closer. Yeah. Please jump towards me so I can power you and knock you back. But no, we will see an easy and clean pick up for the on the inhibitor for the set of NLE because of the overall presence and tankiness of the champions with the great poke coming up. So they're just going to defend because the minion waves were pushing in the opponent's favor for the start of MLE. So they need to go up, clear the minion waves, and then push in much faster and easily. Yeah, right now the Baron buff should be almost gone, but MLE by default have a little bit of advantage in terms of items that he can You're try to. Call it a little bit, really. <laughs> yeah, well, they can. It's still not enough to be able to dive safely. If you dive oh. on, they still be okay, able okay, to. Okay. This is so to dive safely, there's always one item you should buy. Ohm Wrecker. Hmm? It's Ohm Wrecker. Just buy Ohm Wrecker, you dive safely for 2.5 seconds. Yeah, but I have not seen Ohm Wrecker ever. I'm serious. I have not seen it in a normal game. I have not seen it in a ranked game. I have not seen it in any game. It's okay because people forget about the item. Yeah. yeah. So you need to play more with me. I'll show it to you. I'll, my, I'll play Maokai and buy an Ohm Wrecker and be dive tower. Okay, alright. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Anyway, so moving, coming back to this game. We'll see that BKT try to defend once again. The bottom minion ways is pushed out quite a bit far, so they still have the side advantage. And Tristana with the range advantage, just shooting Asate over the wall. But he needs to be very careful though, if he does land those hits. We'll see the dive on the shot. Shot just flashes away, so he rushes away to be in safe position. Shot rush happens and skills is the one that's caught in the bad position. Instead, the burst goes down. Uh, Avi is burst down by Rohan and Rich instead. But here we will see him going in for the kill. And the Zonya, the last second, will be enough to save him. He flashes away, Asate pushes him away. The shutdown goes out. The Kazik from Rumble and here Wibaba is being caught out. He will be able to arcane ship away, but the flash come out of which will secure that. But Javan was like, okay, screw this, my team yeah. will not be able to survive. He's gonna take the tower. He manages to take the tower and Astarte will manage to walk away from this. So it's gonna be a two three for one trade in the favor of BKT and the power from Tristana with the additional range attack speed as well as the critical strikes is just too strong for NLE right now. I'm going to go in the rate of uh, what is on Javan's mind right now. He says like Really guys, like previously when I dive, no one came and right now when I'm hitting the tower, everyone engages really. <laughs> so narrating just what Jarwin might feel in a normal uh, solo queue game possibly. But if the, but the pressure coming out from MLE is still too strong for BKT to fight back so to speak because they still have need to defend the other lanes. They can try to push out the mid but the towers are all, the outer turrets are still all standing for the side of MLE, so it's going to be very hard for BKT to make a comeback. They need to score a very decisive ace in the middle of the map in order for them to be able to take down the opponent's inhibitor. Yeah, BKT, BKT won that battle, but they're still losing the war. And by white, we can see the bottom inhibitor is um, down. He's probably he's not going to respond anytime. And the middle tower oh, can have a little bit of a check on its HP. Yeah, it's around at half HP or so and MLE can just capitalize on just pushing because they, as Teddy has said, the outer towers are still up it will be impossible uh, without a decisive victory to actually push and end it in one sweep on the side of PKT uh, at the, Now you can see them gathering at the top lane pro Time no, he's is. waiting for the Baron. The Baron is coming out in the next 10 seconds. So he is waiting for the perfect time to go for the Baron. The Dragon is up as well, but Baron, of course, is much more important. And BKT is coming in. They know that the Baron is going to be taken very quickly by MLE, but they need to be very careful. MLE has two Orcas. The Ward Pimps planted are spot out very easy by the side of MLE. Yeah, they have two Oracles. They do not want to miss out. They're going to clear twice as fast if they spread out. And right now, MLE has the cards in their hand, uh, especially with the bottom lane auto pushing in. A BKT cannot roam too far away from, from, from the base. So once again, MLE is using the same strategy. You're going to waste the time of BKT and then only do the Baron once more. But here you see MLE is trying to go for the Baron because they saw the advantage when MLE responded to defend the mid lane. They should try to camp in an uh, overall area and try to catch them off guard, but it will not be good enough. And oh. MLE has chosen the fallback once again. The Jarva looked like he was it, wanting to go in, but I guess he he, he did the he taught thoroughly this time and decided <laughs> not to go in. And yes. now Baron will go in the hands of a uh, uh, MLE, but they had no choice because the minions were pushing in at the bot lane and the top lane as well. Are slowly going to reach into the inhib top inhibitor, so they need to choose to defend the bottom lane, give up the Baron. 
All right, this and time, some from here. this time Baron it will be on all five members as they push. Previously, Ari did um, a fatal mistake that would cost them an earlier victory um, by just getting caught at the bottom lane, losing that Baron, having to walk back. All that bought M uh, BKT a lot of time, and and it's the game dragged on. Yes, here we will see once again, and now we just slowly poking from the side. PF is taking the brunt of the damage coming from Shistana and Shistana is just slowly chipping him down. He needs to be very careful of the amount of damage he can take. The bottom inhibitor has respawned, but the problem is that there should still be a super minion. Yes, the super minion has dived in. He should be able to take up that inhibitor. And look at that. The pilks are coming out from Wiwawai, but Wiwawai is not a strong AD carry. He's a utility AD carry, so his pokes are going to take much longer than usual to bring down that inhibitor. Yes, but they have time is what MLE has as the bottom creeps are slowly hitting onto the bottom inhibitor. BKT decided that they have to engage now it, before it is too late and they try to do it. Kha'Zix will be the first victim. The box comes out, Capitalism as well. Ezreal's true shot barrage coming down. This will go directly in the favor of MLE with their Baron buff. Even Ari lives with um, the heal coming up from Alista. This will be lights out for BKT. It's a team ace. 40 seconds for at least Trash to revive. This is not going to be enough. It's going to be GG. Yes, and in the last fight, we didn't see the mission take down hit, but in the end, it was not enough. Because overall, the chunk of the CCs and damage went on to Ari, and Ari baited, out, baited it out with, his, with the Zonyas. Yeah. And the hook, as well as the death charge missed from Nautilus, which is the most important ultimate. It's supposed to hit more than one target if possible. And then for a set of trash, when he went in, he did manage to lock down the members for MLB, but MLB is like in your face. <laughs> With all the spells, as well as Java being on and about. You yeah. know, Kazis did his brunt of the damage and then died, which was fine. So for most of the game, we can see Nautilus has been aiming his ultimate directly at Ari. And I can see the point there. If Ari ever tried to dash away, he could actually... Swing Hit onto more. Yes, yeah, you can actually like 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 Beckham, mm -hmm. like Benny like Beckham hits everyone up. So yes. I see the point there. But Ari has been really really smart with the ultimate, uh, moving towards an angle where she is the only victim, singling herself out, and then coming in with the ulti Once after again, after that. Yeah, so we're gonna move into the score screen for this game, and people are wondering how did BKT win that? Well, they did not win that. Or oh, we were talking about the fight earlier. Anyway, I may be lost on that chat because I don't have the timer. But here, looking at this score screen, we will see that. BKT comes up ahead slightly. Nah, they didn't come up ahead at all. I mean, they didn't <laughs> win that one fight because Java dive in man more and yeah. things like that. MLE made a few mistakes, but the early game, because Java's gangs were so much stronger, were better positioned, and it was a bit weird on how Tristana died a few times. Like, the rocket jump was up and ready, but somehow he must have forgotten that oh, it's already up and ready. I should have jumped away. I'm not sure what was happening. I couldn't say anything. Yeah, but the tipping that. point of this match is definitely the part where BKT hit at that corner with all five cramped up, cost them the ace, cost them uh, and cost MLE to able to be able to take the Baron Dragon without any Baron. contest at all. Yes. That definitely swung the game around and that's where MLE actually took the def the definitive lead at the game. Yes, and that was like a spike of our three K, four K gold lead already, just from that single fight. So BKT they had the game plan but well, MLE just had the more sneaky one yeah. <laughs> in that brush. Hot them pants down. It's called the hands down. So this will